So in the prologue to Jurassic World Dominion, there's this really cool sequence with a uh, T-Rex attacking a drive-in movie theater. And it's a really visually striking scene that uh, I thought would be quite fun to try and recreate or, or do something kind of inspired by in Blender with my T-Rex model. So, so that's what you see here. So today I'm just going to break down this scene for you, how I put it together, um, the, the scene setup, the lighting, the animation and uh, the compositing. There's quite a lot, a lot of compositing that, that went into this shot, even though it is fully CG. So I wasn't necessarily wanting to recreate the shot one to one, um, uh, more trying to capture the same kind of sense of scale and, and the same kind of quality of light that the, the sequence has. And what you can see playing in the background now are just some of the different render passes that, that went into this, the different render layers. So there's, there's three principal kind of elements. There's the main kind of scene with the T-Rex and the cars in the foreground and the screen. Uh, there's this rain element um, that I rendered separately so that I could um, adjust the, the kind of level of that um, and how, how visible it was. Um, and then also there is a volumetric element that was actually rendered in EV simultaneously um, because EV is so much faster for volumetrics and then I, I comped that back in and that's to kind of create this sort of helicopter spotlight. So here you can see the first composite that, that came out of Blender and I'll, I'll go into the, uh, the kind of node setup here. And then I just did a little bit of finishing work in, in After Effects, adding uh, some kind of uh, lens flares, a bit more of a kind of glow, and uh, some sort of foreground elements, some foreground volumetric elements. Um, and then here's just running through all the different layers again, uh, working our way up to the final composite. So here we are in Blender. This is our, our viewport setup. I'm in the main render layer here. So there's, there's two cycles render layers and one EV render layer. Um, as you can see, the scene is, is really, really quite basic from, from anywhere other than the, uh, the main camera angle. I very much knew that I was just gonna get this, this one angle. So I, I modeled everything specifically for that. You've got a very rudimentary ground plane uh, that just kind of raises up behind the screen here. And then I've got a little bit of a displacement map just to add a bit of uh, variation. And then I, I added some uh, kind of gravelly particles on, on the floor. Um, these are just kind of icospheres, smooth shaded with a, a dark glossy material. The ground plane's also a, a collision uh, object um, so that we could get some ground interaction with, with the particle system later. Uh, these car models I just grabbed off BlendSwap. I'll, I'll put links to them below, really nice models. Um, but the, the main point was just to have something in the foreground, you know, they're, they're kind of thrown out of focus. Um, but it just creates that sense of kind of, add, adds a little bit of foreground motion, bit of depth to the shot and, uh, you know, contextualizes it. These posts I just modeled really quickly and uh, arrayed along. Um, like they're kind of demarcating where, where the cars would, would come and park. And again, that just adds a bit more depth and adds some more camera movement. I think the original shot is static. There's maybe a little bit of a, a pan to it, but I, I wanted this kind of reveal of the T-Rex walking into frame. Um, so it does a slight movement and then I, I use some noise to, to give it just a little bit of a kind of slightly handheld feel. Um, and if we play back, you can you can see that. The screen itself is, is just a very simple plane. I, I got it in the, the right kind of aspect ratio for, for a movie theater screen. Um, it does have a little bit of displacement. Um, I tried to create this kind of slightly fabric-y curtain look. I don't think it's particularly visible at, at the end of the day, but it, it's there, adds a little bit of variation. And uh, materials wise, I also gave it a bit of a noise texture just to, so it's not a uniform flat plane. And then this really simple kind of truss around the edge, which I just used a, a wireframe modifier to make. I used a sapling add-on to uh, create these trees at the back. Uh, again, they're, they're pretty much out of focus. They're, there's no detail to these really. It's just to, to give a little bit of a backdrop. I don't think you can really even see them in the final shot. Um, and then this is my, uh, my T-Rex model that I made a couple of years back. Um, animation wise, uh, I'm certainly not a professional animator. Animation is probably my, my weakest point. So my, my strategy is really just to, to brute force it, to add keyframes until it works. If you look at it from any other angle but the camera, 
it's really, <laughs> really funky. Uh, the, the legs kind of clipping through each other. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's the final shot we're interested in. And uh, as long as it works from that camera angle, I've got this car strategically placed so that, um, you know, you, you, you can't quite see what's going on with the legs. The, the T-Rex in Jurassic Park really walks with this kind of front heavy, very weighty movement. So I tried to capture that a, li a little bit, like it's always the, the head is held quite close to the ground, like it's about to sort of tip over almost, um, and really trying to add a bit of power to the roar there. I animated the throat a little bit and the inside of the mouth to, to kind of create the sense that it, there's a lot of power coming out of that sound. Then uh, lighting wise, we have the spot lamp here, which is uh, meant to be kind of a helicopter off screen, looking for the T-Rex. Again, added a little bit of random noise so that it, it, it's moving around, um, and then just added a few simple keyframes. You can see how it comes in and, and sort of swings around. I really wanted to create the sense that the helicopter is also moving in 3D space. It's not just kind of a static spotlight off to the side, so it kind of swings forward as well. Um, like the guys in the helicopter are kind of re constantly readjusting to keep the T-Rex in their sights. Then we also have just two point lights, one up here that's kind of almost moonlight, or it might be a, a kind of a standing lamp out, out here that just catches the kind of back of the T-Rex and lights it up a bit. And then we've got one point light down here that's just up lighting these trees to, to try and bring out just a, a suggestion of detail there. And that's about it, lighting. We do have a world background, I use the sky texture, but it's just uh, very dim kind of post sunset lighting just to get a little bit of reflection in the, the bodies of the cars. Then we have this spot lamp here, which is uh, the projector. So I found some uh, stock footage online. I'll put a link to it in the, in the description of uh, this kind of film burn. So it's some 16 millimeter film. It gets left in the projector too long. It, it, it burns through and you get this wonderful kind of organic melting effect. So um, that's plugged in with the uh, normal texture coordinates onto this light um, with some mapping nodes to, to just get it in the right spot. And then that just plugs into the color of uh, the, the emission for the lamp. So this only works in, in uh, cycles. You can't use nodes for lights in EV. So then the, uh, the only other thing of note on this render layer is these, uh, these particles, these kind of little bits of gravel that the T-Rex is kicking up. It's quite a subtle effect, um, but these are just, this is just a particle system. We've got two, one for each foot. Um, created a vertex group for the kind of base of the foot and uh, used that as a density, plug that into the density down here and then just played with the settings until I got this, uh, this quite nice kind of gravel effect and that's where the, the floor plane um, comes in. So the floor plane collision um, actually kills the particles and I have it set to render the dead particles and that's just to stop them kind of bouncing around. But I think that's, that's quite an effective, very simple and quick way of doing some ground interaction. So on the other view layer we have uh, the rain. So the rain particles are just icospheres shaded smooth with a, uh, a glass material coming from this big plane in the sky. And again, just played with the settings until I got something that, that worked nicely. Added a little bit of randomness so they're not, the particles aren't all just going straight down in the same direction. And that's it for the, uh, the cycles elements. I have the main scene collection set to hold out on this uh, render layer um, so that we can easily composite the rain um, with an alpha channel on top of it and it will kind of respect the, the depth of the scene correctly. So then um, if I switch scenes we also have an EV scene which is identical animation wise it's a if, if you Come up here you can create a linked copy of a scene and then you can just switch the render uh, the render engine so that's what i've done and in this um, i have a, a volumetric world so you can see that plugged into the the volume slot there so this is a, a perfect copy of the uh, the main scene the only difference is we don't have any of the rain we don't have the projector light because um EV doesn't support those textured lights, so we would be getting incorrect kind of um, light rays in the in the volume. And then I have these other lights brought out into this uh, collection here. 
So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just rendering a volume like render pass, um, which I can then in the composite add back in to um, the main scene. So in the compositor, you can see we've got our, our render layers here. In order to render that EV uh, scene at the same time, all you do um, to do this is add another render layer in the compositor and you can switch the scene. And by doing that, that will render at the same time. Worth noting though, if you if you want to do any compositing with this later, if you're saving as a, an OpenEXR multi-layer, um, you will actually have to add a separate uh, file output node and plug this into it um, because the OpenEXR file will only save the uh, the render layers of your main scene, not any scenes that are kind of called by nodes, and it'll save your composite as well. Um, so just remember that. So here's the uh, compositing setup in Blender for this. So I'll uh, I'll just talk you through it. Here we have our kind of beauty pass from the main render layer. And uh, what I like to do is just mix in a little bit of the noisy image you can see there. So I find that the denoised image is almost a bit too clean. Bring in a bit of that noisy image. And then I've added a, just a solid background color because I knew it was going to be night time. So just kind of a, this dark blue background color. And then I'm grabbing the mist pass and comping in a little bit of volumetric uh, mist and then kind of dialing that back with a mix node. Um, then over here is the rain. And again, mixing in the noisy image. I find this is really helpful for rain because you get this that kind of slightly spattered look um, quite cheaply just from, from making use of the kind of cycles noise. So I'm using an alpha over to add that in, but then I'm, I'm also using an, an add node just to, to bring up the highlights a bit more. Then up here we are bringing in our volume. So this is the combined EV pass, which obviously looks uh, pretty horrible but if we we go down we have this uh, volume direct light uh, pass but EV doesn't handle depth of field so well and, and I have kind of some foreground elements so um, what I've done is I've brought in the depth pass from our, our main cycles render and uh, use that to subtract and then blur some of these foreground objects so that we're, we're kind of faking this depth of field so you can you can see the effect that that's having and then literally just just adding that into the main uh, comp down here with an add node. Then we've got a little bit of lens distortion down here. Um, if you check projector, what that does is it, it limits um, it to only the X axis. So that's just separating out, dispersing the light a little bit, um, softens the image and um, kind of replicates what a real lens does. Second lens distortion node here, just uh, making sure we don't have any kind of perfectly straight lines because uh, cameras do not capture perfectly straight lines. Uh, so that, that's a good way of kind of making things look a little bit more realistic. And again, adding a little bit of dispersion and then um, taking a glare pass, adding that back in. Second glare. And then we have an additional glare pass. And that's all the compositing in Blender. I, I, I do have this RGB curves, but that, that was just for, for my own benefit. So this was all exported in Filmic Log initially, but you can mess with these uh, color management settings down here just to get a better idea in Blender of, of what it'll look like when it's uh, properly color corrected. So the only thing I did after that was I, I brought it into After Effects. Um, and overlaid some kind of smoke textures. I, I tracked the scene and, and just uh, in 2D and just attached those with a very low opacity. And uh, what that does, if you've, if you've got kind of quite a dark scene and then these bright volumetric elements coming in, is it kind of creates the illusion that there's a bit more detail in the, in the volume than there might otherwise be. Um, so I added a bit of turbulent displacement to that. And uh, I think the, the effect that has is um, it sort of makes it look like that, that that is a more complex smoke simulation than it actually is. And then I added a lens flare on top of that. And then finally, I'm, I'm color correcting using uh, Film Convert Nitrate, which uh, is a film emulation program. And that adds some, some nice kind of natural looking film grain to the final image.
So there we go. Um, that's the finished shot. I'm, I'm really pleased with how this uh, turned out, especially um, I put it together pretty quickly. It was about four hours of uh, working time before I rendered it. And obviously, if you wanted to, you could you could really uh, push this a lot further. The, the, the scene modeling is very rudimentary uh, because I knew I was just doing this one shot. Uh, if you were going to do a whole kind of animated sequence of this of the T-Rex kind of coming between the cars and, and you want to get different angles, then you'd want to make sure that the, uh, the animation, first of all, was uh, a lot more robust and also that the scene kind of extended a bit further so that you had the freedom to, uh, to get those other angles. Um, but there's nothing wrong with uh, fudging things slightly if you, if you know you're just uh, rendering from one angle. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found that useful and I'll see you in the next one.